Okay, here we go, we have an empty stretch of road. Is needed with the Quattro Forte. Um, you've probably seen this in the previous video where we have uploaded on the wedding convoy which if you haven't watched it please go check it out if you have thank you so much for doing so. So we've I've spent quite a number of um, significant hours with this car and I thought um, I could give you a lowdown of what this car feels like for the past 24 hours and basically my perceptions of the weird but unique Quattro Forte. Here we go, we have an empty stretch of road! <laughs> ah, you will never get tired. Okay, I'll just take out this to be cut, yeah? Now once again, this is the Quattro Porte S. If you don't know what Quattro Porte is, Quattro Porte essentially is four door. Um, that's what it stands for. So that's why the Italians call it Quattro Porte. Now this is not just the Quattro Porte, it is the Quattro Porte S. It has a 4.7 compared to the 4.2. So instead of carrying 391 horsepower, this carries 423 horsepower. So with that comes, well, adequate power, I would say, for, Turn left. for, for a saloon car. The engine itself comes from Ferrari, as we should all no. This is a 2009 model, so this comes standard with the ZF automatic gearbox instead of the semi-automatic uh, manual robotic gearbox that the Quattro Porte initially came with uh, when they first launched. We had numerous complaints about that car because the gearbox was uncharacteristic of such a, such a luxury car and uh, it just felt clunky in, in general. So, um, in 2007 or 2008, after they launched the car, uh, they actually fitted the car with the automatic gearbox that is typically seen on the Gran Turismo, uh, the 4.2 variant space. So this is the product of that. Brand new, this car costed like about, I think $470,000 for the Quattro Forte S variant, uh, while the basic 4.2 Quattro Forte automatic started at about $400,000. 30 or 420. I could be wrong, so uh, correct me on that yeah, if, if I have uh, gone wrong in that uh, margin of prices. Let's start off with something that we can all relate to, and that's petrol. Now, with a 4.7 litre V8 engine, uh, you will not be surprised if I told you that with how we've been driving typically, uh, which is essentially hooning around, but at a very, very safe speed, uh, this car wrecks about 4.3 kilometers per liter. Now, 4.3 kilometers per liter, it is a lot. Uh, you can barely get um, half a tank of fuel if you topped up, maybe about like about a hundred, uh, top up like about eighty dollars. Brakes are good, that's for sure. <laughs> um, so yeah, this car drinks relatively a lot. Let's not also forget that this car actually weighs about two tons. So. Um, while this car has that grunt and has that um, horsepower to actually zip around traffic in, in, in cities like Singapore or small cities perhaps like maybe in the UK or, or in Malaysia perhaps. This is adequate I would say. Um, but you will feel the tremendous lack of power after you actually step on the gas pedal because I shall demonstrate to you right now. Yeah, so you will hear the noise, but you don't really, um, you don't really feel the power of the car. But at the same time, you will still get a sense of enjoyment every time you step on the gas pedal because the oral pleasure that comes out of the back of this car, it is just immense. <laughs> as good as any other Italian supercars can be. 
um, we have all known Maseratis for that. It is unfortunately very, very um, devastating to know that the latest generations of uh, the Quattro Portes were actually turbocharged. So it is something that I have desperately missed out of, um, out of the Quattro Porte and, and, and Maserati in general as a brand because um, I think they've diluted somewhat. Uh, which is why this particular Quattro Porte is something that was very, very special to me. Now, this car is equipped with sports mode. So, sport mode, uh, as with every car, basically it uh, it changes the dynamics, the dynamics of the car. The chassis is more responsive, the throttle is more responsive. Uh, you get a slightly louder exhaust mode by a very um, marginal uh, decibel. It's not something that you'll be able to hear very um, prominently. Okay, let's talk about the right comfort of this car. As I said, this car is actually a... Zero. <laughs> this car is actually a premium Italian sedan. So, you're talking about cars uh, of a similar league. So, cars like perhaps the uh, the BMW 7 Series or, or even the 5 Series. Um, the, the Mercedes S-Class or the E-Class and the Audi A8 then. Um, despite the fact that this is a Continental, it is a sports saloon. If you can afford a car of this caliber, chances are you are not a person of my age. Person of my age, I'm only getting allowance of like $10 per day. I can't afford this car. I can't even afford a fuel for this car. <laughs> so if you want, if you are able to afford this kind of car, chances are you, you are of a certain age. And there is a sport button over here which actually firms up the suspension. And the ride can be quite bumpy. So, I'm not sure exactly this is the kind of ride that everyone would actually enjoy. It's safe to say that the suspension is quite stiff. I have had back aches um, along the journey, especially when I'm stuck in traffic. Uh, there is a lack of lumbar support and uh, yeah, I can just never find this. I can just never find the right sitting position of this car. Uh, slightly awkward, I would say. The steering position, I, I would say, is, is perfectly fine. Um, you get nice... Um, ample size steering wheel with perforations across the side and a 10 to 2 position with the sport grip uh, it gives you the sense of occasion that you want to you want to drive fast with this car but uh, the only issue is that you cannot really drive fast i think 0 to 100 takes about 4.7 seconds in this car. so this car is offered by f1 auto cars it's a 2009 quattro forte this car is going i think about 100k and it has i think about eight to seven months left on the seagull so if you do buy this car, you are still eligible for a PAF if you are deregistering the car within the 7 months before the slowly expires. Otherwise, this car will be good enough for another 10 years, I believe. With proper maintenance histories um, and servicing, I think you will be able to enjoy this car for what it's worth for the next 10 years. You will need a stronger financial backing up if you are going to be able to enjoy this car in its full entirety. Now what about the driver, drivability of this car, you may ask. Um, it is not as intimidating as it, as it actually sounds. So um, driving this car, yeah, it's, it's really not that hard guys. Now I also want to talk about <laughs> the buttons on the steering wheel. Uh, Italian cars are known for, uh, for its quirkiness I would say, yeah. It's known really for its quirkiness and this Quattro Forte is no exceptions. There are buttons on the steering wheel but they don't really function. I don't even know why they're there in the first place. Um, the ergonomics is a bit um, quirky in the sense that there is every button that only does one thing and one thing only. You want to open um, the rear sunshade, you actually have to press a button to open it. The same button doesn't close the sunshade, it's actually a separate button. Uh, <laughs> So in a sense, that's uh, that's quite weird. And there are actually, if you can see here, there are buttons behind the steering wheel. There are six of them actually. No idea what they do, but they're just there. I've tried working um, with, with the buttons, but they're not corresponding to anything. Um, I've heard that they are supposed to control the volume for, um, for, for the audio, but you know, it, it doesn't work. And there is a button over here, which is supposedly doing that but it doesn't work this is for changing track and for changing i think the audio band the the radio band doesn't work either voice command doesn't work either you think the audio doesn't work either i don't know what works the light works the parking sensor button here works i don't think i've mentioned this as well but there are pedals over here and they remain um they remain um position in the steering rack which is good it doesn't move around uh, the only problem that I face with this um, setup is that 
the indicator stock are actually pretty far away from uh, from the usual reach or point um, for for European cars. So you have to actually stretch pretty much. So you do get a sunroof. So if you retract that and you turn some lever around here, you will actually be able to retract um, the sunroof and get some um, you know audible exhaust notes along the way. You don't get a, a reverse camera for a 2009 car especially for this one, surprisingly. Um, typical cars like even a Toyota Camry back in 2009 it already comes with uh, with a reverse camera. And this car is around um, $400,000 brand new. And it doesn't come with a reverse camera. It takes a while for you to actually understand the, the, the size of this car. Parking could be a little bit tricky, especially if you're not used, to, uh, if you have already been used to a uh, reverse camera because a lot of cars are equipped these days. So, yeah, I guess those are the only quirks that I can find for now. Uh, you may watch Doug's video for, for, for all his bashings on the previous Quattroporte. I would say 80% of what that Quattroporte that Doug reviewed will carry on to this facelifted uh, Quattroporte back in 2009. But thankfully, um, the 20% that made the car absolutely trashy for the first generation has been taken off from the car. So, you can sing some joy in that with this car. You just cannot get over that sound. You just want to keep playing with, with, with the pedals and, and with the throttle just to hear <laughs> that symphony that bellows out from that two amazing oval exhausts. Yeah, and, and despite some of the flaws that I've just mentioned and everything, you tend to forgive all of that, really. Yeah, this car really just takes off that 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 uh, the bucket list for for the best uh, car, the best exhaust sounding car that you can buy today. So um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, do give it a thumbs up if you really enjoyed this video. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get um, our hands more on, on such uh, marks of vehicle. If you do enjoy such contents, please do let us know. Uh, if you do have any better ideas that we, you, uh, that we could implement in our videos, please also do let us know on that one because we would love for you to actually um, experience that along with us as well. So in the meantime, um, it's me signing out and we will see you in our next video.